Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. Welcome to another episode of White Paper Wednesday. It is Wednesday and what I do every Wednesday is I read through something that uh, you know, a lot of people in the space might have heard of, but haven't actually read through. So this one, um, uh, today we're going to read through a cypherpunk's manifesto, and this is hosted on uh, Nakamoto Institute. So without further ado, let's get over to uh, cypherpunk's manifesto from Eric Hughes. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, cypherpunk's was a, a mailing list that was created, I think in the early 90s, something like that, uh, shortly before this, uh, this was created. And the idea was that um, well, I mean, you'll you'll see the idea as I read it, but uh, but it, it was a manifesto of sorts. It was a um, a statement of what they believed was true, and um, and you know it, it had had a lot of influence in Bitcoin. Um, you know, like for example, Satoshi um, was a cypherpunk. Adam Back um, is still a cypherpunk. A lot, a lot of other people um, that were cypherpunks ended up doing all sorts of things. Um, I think uh, they include people like Julian Swinge and people like that. So anyway, uh, let's uh, let's get to it. Um, crazy that this was published March 9th, 1993. Um, I was in high school back then. Anyway, let's let's uh, let's read through a cypherpunks manifesto by Eric Hughes. Privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age. Privacy is not secrecy. A private matter is something one doesn't want the whole world to know. But a secret matter is something one doesn't want anybody to know. Privacy is the power to selectively reveal oneself to the world. And this is an excellent, excellent distinction because in many ways, uh, you know, the, the argument that's always given is with, well, if you have nothing to hide, why are you, why, why do you need, a, why do you need privacy? Um, well, you could give it out to everybody, but then that's, uh, that, that's idiotic. Like you, nobody has the right to know everything about you. It's, it's, it, it's, uh, it's about being able to control from, uh, you know, information about yourself to others. And that, that's what this, uh, this is saying in the first paragraph. If two parties have some sort of dealings, then each has a memory of their interaction. Each party can speak about their own memory of this. How can anyone prevent it? One could pass laws against it, but the freedom of speech, even more than privacy, is fundamental to an open society. We seek not to restrict any speech at all. If many parties speak together in the same forum, each can speak to all the others and aggregate together knowledge about individuals and other parties. The power of electronic communications has enabled such group speech, and it will not go away merely because we might want it to. This is prescient because it was written in 1993. I think back then, like AOL was barely alive and, uh, you know, Usenet was, uh, I guess, somewhat popular, but a uh, vast majority of people didn't even know what the internet was. And uh, th this is sort of like preceding that, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, like what we know today as, uh, you know, public forums or, uh, you know, something like Reddit or Twitter. It's, it's kind of crazy, but uh, this sort of anticipated all of that. Since we desire privacy, we must ensure that each party to a transaction have knowledge only of what is directly necessary for that transaction. Since any information can be spoken of, we must ensure that we reveal as little as possible. In most cases, personal identity is not salient. When I purchase a magazine at a store and hand cash to the clerk, there is no need to know who I am. When I ask my electronic mail provider to send and receive messages, my provider need not know to whom I am speaking or what I am saying or what others are saying to me. My provider only need know how to get the message there and how much I owe them in fees. When my identity is revealed by the underlying mechanism of the transaction, I have no privacy. I cannot here selectively reveal myself. I must always reveal myself. So. This is the big, uh, big, 
you know, problem here is that a lot of transactions collect extra information that they don't really need. Um, and this is especially true of a lot of e-commerce sites. They, they want to know all the stuff about you, um, despite not really needing it, right? See laws in particular are especially bad for that because they force the merchant or a provider to collect information that they don't really need to service you. Therefore, privacy in an open society requires anonymous transaction systems. Until now, cash has been the primary such system. An anonymous transaction system is not a secret transaction system. An anonymous system empowers individuals to reveal their identity when desired and only when desired. This is the essence of privacy. So only giving some people, uh, only giving up information that you want to reveal to whom you want to reveal, that's the point. That's what privacy is all about. It isn't about hiding from everybody. It's being able to selectively reveal. It's about control of the data. Um, and privacy is about you controlling the data. Not having privacy means that somebody else does. Uh, and this is information about you. Privacy in an open society requires cryptography. If I say something, I want it heard only by those for whom I intend it. If the content of my speech is available to the world, I have no privacy. To encrypt is to indicate the desire for privacy, and to encrypt with weak cryptography is to indicate not too much desire for privacy. Furthermore, to reveal one's identity with assurance when the default is an anonymity requires the cryptographic signature. So, um, you know, Eric is bringing up here the need for cryptography. And back then in 1993, um, you know, you couldn't export any cryptography that was more than 40 bits. Now, 40 bits is absolutely nothing. You could uh, even back then you could break it with like a lap, uh, a computer in like a, a few days or something like that. Um, Nowadays, you know, 256-bit uh, cryptography is uh, is standard, um, and that is uh, way more than uh, you know the number of atoms in the galaxy and so on, um, or the number of uh, tries you would have to do. And so, so um, you know, privacy requires cryptography, and you can't use weak cryptography because weak cryptography can be broken very easily. We cannot expect governments, corporations, or other large faceless organizations to grant us privacy out of their beneficence. It is to their advantage to speak of us, and we should expect that they will speak. To try to prevent their speech is to fight against the realities of information. Information does not just want to be free, it longs to be free. Information expands to fill the available storage space. Information is rumor's younger, stronger cousin. Information is fleeter of foot, has more eyes, knows more, and understands less than rumor. So uh, basically, in order to have uh, privacy, you need really, uh, you need stronger things because information just uh, leaks everywhere. We must defend our own privacy if we expect to have any. We must come together and create systems which allow anonymous transactions to take place. People have been defending their own privacy for centuries with whispers, darkness, envelopes, closed doors, secret handshakes, and couriers. The technologies of the past did not allow for strong privacy, but electronic technologies do. And this is the big difference. This is something that people have desired for a very long time. And, uh, and you know, all of those things, closed doors, secret handshakes, etc., were uh, have been in existence because people desire privacy and, uh, and to reveal information to those that they want uh, to reveal that information to. We, the cypherpunks, are dedicated to building anonymous systems. We are defending pri our privacy with cryptography with anonymous mailing, mail forwarding systems, with digital signatures, and with electronic money. Here is, uh, oh well, so Eric's mentioned cash a few times, but this is a key part of the cypherpunk manifesto, is this idea of an electronic money that is decentralized. Um, it took, um, you know, another, 15 years before uh, before Satoshi came along and actually provided it. But this was something that was desired by this community from the beginning. Cypherpunks write code. We know that someone has to write software to defend privacy. And since we can't get privacy unless we all do it, 
we're going to write it. We publish our code so that our fellow cypherpunks may practice and play with it. Our code is free for all to use worldwide. We don't much care if you don't approve of the software we write. We know that software can't be destroyed and that a widely dispersed system can't be shut down. So this is um, an ode to open source software. The idea that you can write software and release it to the world and you know, like if you don't approve of it, sorry, there's nothing you can do because like information, software is free and uh, wants to be free. Cypherpunks deplore regulations on cryptography, for encryption is fundamentally a private act. The act of encryption, in fact, removes information from the public realm. Even laws against cryptography reach only so far as a nation's border and the arm of its violence. Cryptography will ineluctably spread over the whole globe and with it the anonymous transaction systems that it makes possible. So there, there's some hope for some sort of electronic um, money system here. Uh, but essentially what, what uh, Eric is talking about is that, uh, you know, at the time there was that like, uh, you know, exporting of anything beyond 40 bits uh, of encryption was illegal. And uh, there was uh, several people went to jail for it and stuff. Uh, but it, it's absolutely logical. You need, in order to have privacy, you need cryptography. And that's, that's what that was all about. For privacy to be widespread, it must be part of a social contract. People must come, to, come and together deploy these systems for the common good. Privacy only extends so far as the cooperation of one's fellows in society. We the cypherpunks seek your questions and your concerns and hope we may engage you so that you, we do not deceive ourselves. We will not, however, be moved out of our course because some may disagree with our goals. The cypherpunks are actively engaged in making the network safer for privacy. Let us proceed together apace onward. Yeah, um, so this is the manifesto and out of this came stuff like the Tor project, WikiLeaks, Bitcoin, lots of other stuff um and it's it's amazing that uh you know really it's a concern for privacy it's a it's a desire to have control over your own information instead of the government having control of it which is what it really comes down to all right let's see if there are any questions uh i don't really see any um yeah, um, but sadly, you know, you know, there is KYC in a lot of crypto exchanges because anything involving fiat requires know your customer. That's uh, that's something the government desires or has mandated and regulates uh, pretty heavily. And if you don't comply, then you lose your license and you can't. Uh, um, basically, you you have to either go to the black market, like um, you know, the dark web or something like that, or you have to um, you have to combine those, those are your only two choices so uh, this is what the cypherpunk man uh, a cypherpunks manifesto is uh, hopefully that's something that you agree with if you don't uh, please mention in the comments why not uh, but this is the the basis for a lot of what we have in Bitcoin today is uh, is a desire for privacy is a desire to um, have transaction systems that are private. All right. Um, anyway, uh, that, that's about it. Fiat, the Lenda Est, this song is 